Hey, good morning, guys. It's Anthony. We're back with another market update. In today's video, we're talking about CPI that happened yesterday. It's Thursday morning, pre market right now. We got PPI coming out this morning. I just want to give an update on the short trade I'm in and where we think the market's going to go in these coming weeks. If you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, definitely hit that subscribe button. I personally trade ES and NASDAQ futures. So if you trade that, you definitely want to hit that subscribe button. It took me two years to become consistently profitable trading. Lots of trial and error, lots of lessons learned along the way, lots of mentorship programs paid for. But if you are not profitable yet, I believe you will be over a span of a couple of years. So stick with it. And without further ado, let's dive into the charts. So we're taking a look at DXY right now, the dollar. I said previously that it's been tricky. You know, we, we want this to push up if we want to have faith in our short position because typically when the dollar rises, stocks tend to fall. And we've just been chopping around at these lower levels, but we're really curling up and we sold off yesterday on the CPI print and now we're pushing up pre-market and I really think that this was the higher low here and we will go up to that 103 area, like I said last video. So last video, I, I said that I think we're gonna push up get to that 103 area at some point by the end of May, and that will in turn help ES get down to about 4020 at some point by the end of May. So DXY is still looking good. Why is it looking good? Because we didn't take out these lows, even on that CPI print, because uh, CPI came in lower than expected, but we couldn't even take out the recent lows on that. So that was great news. Second piece of amazing news was, on that spike, we only got up to about 41.73 on ES, where I said that I was expecting about 41.80 as a high, and then us continue lower. And I said it was possible we go above 42.20, but if we don't, then that's likely the high and we continue lower. So we got that. I got some ads on my short at 41.50 to 41.60. Now my, my cost basis is at 41.45. I am in my short position and now my stops are at 42.10 because CPI has passed. I didn't, I had wider stops because I thought CPI could rip us up. We didn't get ripped up and now I think that we will trend lower from now until the end of May in the next two weeks, targeting that 40-20 fair value gap down there. But again, you know, we only came up into this resistance to the left here on the one hour chart. Trade up, you know, we had resistance at 41.75, 76, we couldn't even get up there. There is a gap fill on SPX at about uh, 41.65. And you know, that's why I have this alert right here because this alert is basically ES 4180. So I personally, I still think it's possible we could see 4180 today, Thursday, but I think it's actually unlikely. I think we'll just start going down. We do have PPI coming out this morning and I think that that was the lower high and I'll show you a few reasons why. But just to recap, we didn't have any news Monday and Tuesday, but then Wednesday we had CPI 8.30 and now this morning, Thursday, we have 8.30 a.m. core PPI. We also have BOE, Governor Bailey speaking, so I don't know how long that's going on for, but for USD, FOMC member Waller speaking 10 to 15, so it could be choppy today. Friday morning, we just have a consumer sentiment. Honestly, with my analysis, I, I really think that today will be a down day, Thursday, even though we're up pre-market. If my analysis is correct, I think we will have a down day. And then, you know, by 4050, we'll get down to those, that 4080 to 4070 area um, in the next two days. If not, doesn't matter, that's fine. I still have the ultimate target being 4020 by the end of May, uh, specifically actually like May 22nd at this point. So just look at the market structure on the daily chart. We hit the peak. And we had free range to come up into 4180 because there's some resistance here at 4180. So I, you know, we could come up there still and then come down. But like I said previously, after CPI, I'm moving my stops to 4210 and then 4220 is my TP. And my risk reward ratio right now is a two to one because my average is 4145 on my short. My TP is 4020 by the end of May. And then my stop is 4210. So basically risking 60 points to get about 120 points. So we're just gonna watch this now, let this play out, keep the stops in place, and let that one go. NASDAQ, on the other hand, like I said previously, I, was, I wasn't trading this, I'm not shorting this because it's been stronger, and what do you know, it kept ripping up. So I'm glad I didn't get in NASDAQ. You know, sometimes it's tempting to get in NASDAQ because you can get a lot more points when it does move in your favor, but if you're on the wrong side of it, it will just cause so much pain for you. So I'm, you know, it's just been stronger than ES because of the banks on, uh, S&P 500, they've been dragging ES down, but NASDAQ, tech stock's been, been still holding up nice. So I don't have a lot to talk about, about NASDAQ because it's just been really strong. So it's just trending up at this point. Um, the VIX did a nice back tax test yesterday. So 
look where we are on the VIX. We're finding some support here. Right at that 1650, we fully back tested. Now at this point, uh, basically my setup will be invalidated if we take out this low. So if the VIX goes below 1550, my short probably invalidated. If ES goes above 4210, my short probably invalidated. But if those two things get respected, then my short is on. Same with DXY. If we hold 100.8, then my short thesis holds. DJT still have the divergence holding up. You see, we consistently are making lower highs. And then you go to US 30 from March 6th to now. Consistently higher highs. Recent weakness on US 30, but consistently going higher. DJT consistently going lower. Down three crash signal implying that we get a, a, about a 5% sell-off from that May 1st high in the next 20 days, 30 days, so at some point by the end of May. Still sticking with that, I think we see 4020 by the end of May. And two more things I wanna take a look at, HYG and then the Fear and Greed Index. So HYG, we pushed up. What's interesting now is we did get to the 50%. So yesterday we hit the 50% retracement and then on ES, we hit the 786. So again, consistently looking like we have weakness in smart money flow because ES, when ES rises more than HYG rises, it means that there is some internal weakness because smart money is not fully buying that rally. So if, again, let's just take a look at this. We're going real sideways on ES and you take a look at HYG and you can clearly see we, we're kind of, we're falling down. You can clearly see this is a lot more straight sideways action. It doesn't really look like we're really heading down. It's real a lot of sideways action. You go to HYG and you see that it's really looking like we're going down, not as much sideways action. And then let's take a look at the fear and greed index just to top it off here. We had a big drop in the put to call ratio and this is exactly what I wanna see. So this is luring in a lot of people to go long. So when the CPI release came out, you see May 8th and then you see May 10th. So from May 8th to May 10th, we went down a lot in the put to call ratio. That means that a lot of people closed their puts, which means a lot less people are bearish. And when that happens, there is a reversal to stop out longs. So we could get a sudden drop today or tomorrow just to stop out people because again, we had a drop in the put to call ratio and I, I think we're gonna trend up in the put to call ratio to about one to 1.1 and then we can start looking for longs. But right now I personally, I'm just not looking on at longs until we get down or I'm seeing some other internals change. Again, like I said, I can be stopped out at 4210, but that's all I wanted to cover in this video. Everything is looking good still. Uh, we didn't even get up to 4180, CPI was not able we had, we had a cool CPI come in and we still weren't able to push to new highs. So that's a big red flag. And it looks like everything's going good in terms of the short thesis. So that's gonna conclude this video. Thanks so much for watching. Look out for the next video coming out Sunday at 12 p.m. Let me know in the comments down below what you were thinking of what you're trading. If you do appreciate the video, just give it a thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.